thank you very much, uh, Drashri. Uh, again, it's a pleasure to be part of uh, uh, this webinar and interact with uh, all the members of the PDPU community. Uh, uh, can you allow me to share my screen? Uh, Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, so again, uh, I think uh, some of you I may have met, I have visited uh, PDPU and Jeremy uh, more than five or six times in uh, last decade. So again, maybe students, obviously, probably you were not there that time. But uh, again, uh, you guys have a lovely campus and uh, also the kind of investments what PDPU has been doing, starting with the uh, solar one megawatt uh, solar plant, which was set up right next to the uh, entrance. And then I think since then there has been a lot more addition. So I'm really looking forward to coming back to PDPU and uh, learning more about some of the innovative work which is uh, happening there. Uh, so today I'm going to focus on the uh, energy storage opportunities, challenges, and particularly uh, talking about uh, some insights on uh, some of the you know, uh, entrepreneurship opportunities which are emerging. Um, so uh, just as an introduction, uh, 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 I'm president of Customized Energy Solutions uh, India Private Limited, as well as I lead emerging technologies globally for company. Uh, and uh, we started working on energy storage way back in 2004 uh, when Electric Power Research Institute, which is a central R&D uh, uh, organization for U.S. utilities, uh, they have been working for actually energy storage technologies for more than 30 years. Uh, but they were a little bit confused on how these technologies will play into electricity markets in U.S. Uh, so they reached out to us for a collaborative project and uh, uh, we did uh, evaluate uh, how some of these energy storage technologies can play into the New York electricity market. And it was meant as a one-off project, but uh, somehow it ended up leading to even my PhD at Carnegie Mellon University on economics of energy storage in electricity markets. Then the work which I did there ended up leading to some of the changes in the regulatory landscape in US, such as the FERC Order 755, which created pay for performance regulation for ancillary services such as frequency regulation. And we as a company has continued over last uh, now 17 years to work with more than 200 uh, companies in this uh, space which include more than 30 startups who have gone ahead and raised uh, uh, more than $2 billion in trying to commercialize this technology. But we have also worked with many of the uh, leading technology adopters, the independent power producers such as AES, NextEra, Race America. Uh, these are all our clients and we have helped them become one of the uh, largest uh, RE plus energy storage players globally. Uh, so in 2010, when I returned back to India, actually I got convinced that uh, in India, the opportunity for energy storage is even much bigger given the supply demand challenges. Unfortunately, there was not much awareness about the advances in the technology. Most of the people were thinking only about uh, either lead acid batteries or pumped hydro when you were thinking about energy storage technologies. Uh, so we started creating awareness and soon realized that this is not something which a single company can achieve. And that's where we created in 2012 India Energy Storage Alliance to bring together various stakeholders for creating awareness about uh, energy storage and e-mobility as well as microgrid technologies. Uh, in 2016, we decided because that time already the solar had taken off and uh, people had started thinking about, okay, did we make a mistake by not including manufacturing of solar and focus just on the cost reduction. So we thought, okay, for solar, probably that was a little bit late uh, uh, discussion. Maybe that discussion should have happened five years ahead. But uh, if you see 2015 was a time when Elon Musk had just announced setting up of a gigafactory in US. Uh, uh, in fact, the global uh, gigafactory capacities was only around 50 gigawatt hour by that time. And most of the individual gigafactories that time were five to 10 gigawatt hour. So we thought that would be actually a good time for India to start looking into similar manufacturing capability. And we set a modest goal of getting to 10 gigawatt hour manufacturing by 2020, and we started working on that. So in 2016, we set a vision saying that uh, we would like to make India a global hub for R&D manufacturing uh, and adoption of advanced energy storage and e-mobility technologies by 2022. And we are almost on that path, I think, at least in terms of the policies, as I will show uh, in the presentation, uh, perhaps in terms of the implementation and uh, uh, some of the surrounding businesses, we are maybe two or three years behind. Uh, but uh, that's where I think there are tremendous opportunities for all of you 
to jump in and uh, 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 energize this sector with your uh, entrepreneurship and your uh, passion. Uh, so uh, IESA, as I mentioned, we started in 2012. First year, we were just five of us uh, who started IESA. Uh, but now IESA has grown to more than 140 companies. And uh, uh, this graphics is not up to date, but uh, again, we are happy to welcome PDPU as one of the latest uh, uh, members of the IESA community. So uh, I think once the formalities are over, again, all the students will also get uh, access to the various IESA webinars as well as uh, internships opportunities and other things. So a lot of opportunities which I will mention in this. Uh, you guys, as uh, since PDPU had joined IESA, you will have access to that. So feel free to reach out to the IESA team if there are uh, any areas where uh, you can utilize IESA as a platform. Uh, the way uh, my colleague uh, Debbie Dash, who is also on the call, uh, uh, he likes to explain is uh, IESA membership is like a gym membership. So we have a lot of resources and facilities available how much you get out of it is based on how much you use. So if the students are interested, we'll be happy to also organize maybe a student community. Uh, uh, we are using a software platform called NodeGen where we are trying to do this. So if you guys are already on that platform, you can use it. Or otherwise, even we can figure out where maybe if you have a uh, uh, energy club or uh, something similar, uh, you can get together, obviously, post-COVID, once you guys have uh, had your vaccination till that time, uh, we would maintain the online-only format with separate things. But beyond that, you can start using along the IESA webinars, uh, getting students together and then maybe uh, interacting as a group uh, with uh, other IESA members. Uh, we have also created IESA Academy where uh, we are starting to host various uh, training programs because over last seven years we have done uh, probably more than 20 different workshops and training programs. Uh, so we are digitizing those and keeping those uh, on-demand resources available. Also, we are um, partnered with various organizations including Administrative Staff College of India, Advit Foundation, ARI Academy, Center for Materials for Electronics Technology, Indian Electrical Electronics Manufacturing Association for doing specific training courses. And I'm also uh, in discussion with the PDPU faculty for possibly doing something similar, certain joint training programs uh, uh, with IESA. In fact, one of the objectives what we have is many of the training programs which will do mainly targeted towards students will make it open source. And any university which is part of the uh, IESA uh, uh, can actually access those uh, uh, training materials and teach them in uh, live classes as well. So uh, we want to not limit to what we teach just to uh, us, but we want to create a vibrant community. And also we are keeping a provision for having guest faculty lectures and others. So again, if there are any faculty members uh, and if PDPU structure allows for you to uh, be part of a guest faculty at IESA Academy and do certain training programs which can be accessed by rest of the IESA members uh, or other participants, then that also we can encourage so that there is a more vibrant interaction between industry and PDPU. Um, we already have, again, as I mentioned, this is not the updated slide. We will add PDPU logo also on this, but already some of the other top universities such as uh, my alma mater, Carnegie Mellon University, Stanford University, uh, Pune University, VZTI, uh, World Resource Institute, uh, 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 Prayas, uh, which is one of the leading pol policy think tanks from Pune, Karpagam University, all of them are part of the IESA. And we are looking at sort of growing this to maybe at least around 15, 20 uh, universities for also looking for collaborations across uh, universities. Uh, we have also set aside almost uh, uh, 10 lakh worth of uh, fund for uh, giving scholarships and uh, uh, internships. Uh, uh, and also there will be some additional unpaid internships also available. Uh, so uh, uh, again, there are a lot of, I think, uh, opportunities coming up. And the funding which I mentioned right now is sort of starting funding is provided by customized energy solutions, but we are also opening this up to all the IESA members. And we hope that within like next one or two years, if we can show some good success stories out of this type of interaction, then many of the IESA members will also step up and match or even uh, uh, add up on this funding. And we can have like a maybe bigger pool of maybe one crore or a larger amount of funding available for students. Uh, we are also working on launching an accelerator and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, so if there are any uh, uh, new startups who want to take benefit, uh, there is a startup membership, which is a discounted 50% membership. Uh, but beyond that, we are also creating a 
startup cohort where we are doing regular monthly mentoring sessions. Uh, we are also uh, arranging uh, investor meetings for the startups. Uh, and through Accelerator, we'll actually take an active role. We will take a sweat equity in the uh, uh, startup and actually help in uh, creating the business plan, uh, uh, finding strategic partners for the uh, start, uh, startups uh, which are part of this uh, Accelerator program. So now coming to the technology side, uh, the way, again, when we talk about energy storage, a lot of time uh, people end up thinking about mainly uh, uh, batteries, uh, but there are many forms of technologies, uh, uh, not just all types of batteries, but mechanical like flywheels. Uh, there are large uh, mechanical systems like compressor energy storage, which is similar to a gas turbine, uh, but using uh, 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 electricity for uh, uh, compressing the air and then utilizing it uh, separately. There is pumped hydro, which has been the one of the oldest and uh, most widely deplo deployed uh, energy storage technology. Uh, but energy storage doesn't have to be only in form of electricity to electricity. There is also thermal energy storage. There is chemical energy storage, such as hydrogen fuel cells. There is pure electrical, where you don't change the form, like change electricity to chemical energy and back to electricity. But instead of that, you can just directly use uh, uh, electricity and then store it in ultra capacitors and release it back or SMEs. Uh, and obviously, uh, whenever you are changing form from AC, DC back to AC, the power electronics plays a very critical role. So uh, as IESA, we are working across this entire value system. And one of the biggest uh, the, uh, sort of uh, change which is coming up is electric vehicles. You can think of it electric vehicles as a storage on block uh, or storage on wheels, uh, where uh, Typically now with the way people are looking for uh, range, like for example, Tesla has almost 80 to 100 kilowatt hour of batteries uh, uh, packs uh, in, in one single car, right? Uh, typically like in India, like if you see home inverter systems, then you would have maybe one or two kilowatt hour as a home backup uh, for uh, this. Whereas now with uh, all these cars coming in, you will have anywhere from 30 to 100 or 100 and even 150 kilowatt hour kind of a battery packs on that. If you're looking at electric buses, then you have anywhere from like a 100 to uh, uh, almost 300, 350 kilowatt hour uh, on a single bus. So whenever all these buses are uh, parked at a depot or they are at a charging, you have actually megawatt scale uh, energy storage asset uh, available with you connected to the grid. So there are a lot of innovation opportunities possible in terms of the vehicle to grid as well. Um, within battery technologies, uh, there are again more than 15 uh, different families of technologies. There are primary batteries which you use like a dry cells or others where you use it only once and then you uh, send it for recycling. Uh, uh, there are uh, rechargeable batteries where uh, you have a different form of batteries like nickel metal hydride or uh, uh, nickel cadmium have been around for a long time. Uh, uh, lead acid has been around for a long time, but then last uh, 10 years, uh, one of the most promising and uh, uh, most dominating technology has been lithium ion. But within lithium ion, there are again different types, so lithium cobalt oxide, uh, lithium ion phosphate, lithium manganese oxide, uh, lithium uh, nickel cobalt aluminum, which is used primarily by Panasonic and Tesla. Uh, there is NMC, which is a uh, chemistry which is mainly popular with Korean manufacturers. LFP was dominated by Chinese manufacturers. There are certain high performance technologies like LTO, the lithium titanate oxide, which can give you like a five minute quick charge discharge uh, capabilities. Uh, so uh, there are a lot of such uh, uh, opportunities which are coming up with these technologies. And as I mentioned with these technologies, there is a storage device, there is a power conversion system, uh, and uh, you end up uh, mixing those. Uh, overall, again, storage technologies are not new. Uh, they have been around uh, since almost uh, 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 18th century, uh, uh, especially last 100 plus years, lead acid batteries have dominated, but then there are many forms of technologies which have come up. Uh, typically, the format is more or less similar. You have uh, electrodes, uh, you have a separator, uh, you have electrolyte, and all of them are packaged together to get the right amount of voltage and current carrying capacity. Uh, if it, you can look at the lithium ion cells, there are different form factors. So earlier one was shown was lead acid battery. Uh, uh, if you see lithium ion battery, you have these cylindrical cells or you have pouch or prismatic cells where uh, the difference is only form factor in terms of the electrochemistry, both will be uh, exactly identical. Um, 
one of the things which is uh, happening with uh, storage technologies is also improvement in uh, energy density uh, where when i started working on and i worked on one of the first uh, grid scale energy storage projects a 250 kilowatt hour battery required almost 20 foot container so you can think of it as a 40 foot standard shipping container around 500 kilowatt hour since then things have started improving uh, and now you have actually some of the companies providing anywhere from six to nine megawatt hour in a 40 foot container so you can think that it is not just about the cost reduction which gets talked about a lot but there is also significant improvement on the energy density both by volume and by uh, uh, weight has happened uh, we are now starting to see individual projects which are like uh, hundreds of megawatt hours. This is a project which was installed a couple of years back uh, in uh, California by AES, which is one of the uh, members of IESA. Uh, but uh, in fact, recently I have worked on a uh, due diligence of a project which was 800 megawatt hour project in a single location. So it was a 200 megawatt four hour energy storage project. So this is the type of projects which are uh, starting to happen now. So we are no longer limited to kilowatt or hundreds of kilowatt hour kind of a scale. Uh, these are something which are truly game changers. The other aspect which is very important is time because these projects are distributed. These projects can be commissioned very fast. So this is a classic story of the Hansdale project uh, by Neo uh, Wind and uh, uh, Tesla, where there was uh, in 2016, there was a major outage and there were a lot of uh, political discussions after that. And uh, uh, Elon Musk ended up suggesting that rather than looking at strengthening transmission lines or building a gas turbine, they should look at storage. And they can actually, because typically these transmission upgrades or uh, new generation projects, they took easily two to three years for uh, uh, entire planning, uh, preparation, construction, and commissioning. Uh, so he offered that he can actually uh, get this project up and running in 100 days. And uh, uh, Australian government took him on that challenge. There was a competition. Uh, Tesla won it uh, in partnership with NeoWind. And they actually built this 100 megawatt, 129 megawatt hour project in record uh, almost three months of time. And that project uh, for last two plus years has been operating. I was fortunate to visit it in uh, uh, 2018, uh, uh, where uh, I could see it in uh, person. Uh, but then, uh, since then, in fact, uh, various studies have demonstrated value of the project and they have already doubled the size of the project. Uh, but in lithium ion is not the only technology, there are flow battery technologies, and I believe uh, PDP is looking at one demonstration right now with uh, flow battery technologies. Here, the energy and power is decoupled. Uh, you have fuel cells where you are using uh, hydrogen uh, or methane as a fuel energy source, and then you uh, convert it uh, uh, in fuel cell to generate electricity. Uh, you have compressor energy storage, uh, which I mentioned earlier, where you use half the energy from electricity. And then when the compressor is getting released through the expander, uh, it needs to be preheated. Uh, and that's where you use some additional uh, energy, uh, which can be used in, in form of natural gas or other waste heat as well. Um, Flywheels basically converts the electrical energy into angular momentum. And uh, when you want to generate electricity back, uh, basically you let the same motor run as a, uh, a generator and it basically the speed of the flywheel keeps on going down. And typically these flywheels are meant for anywhere from 30 seconds to maybe 10 or 15 minute worth of uh, energy storage. Uh, they are not long duration energy storage, but something which is very cyclic and uh, uh, they can offer a very good uh, solution. Uh, when it comes to storage technologies, you need to, uh, again, I think all of you are uh, trained enough, so I don't want to go into too many details, but like energy, power, uh, the difference probably kilowatt, kilowatt hour, you understand, but a lot of time we do see people getting confused about these uh, terms. Uh, when you hear gigafactories, the term is based on the gigawatt hour capacity. Uh, of the batteries which are getting produced. Uh, but then each, each battery, if you are using it um, multiple times in a year, can store actually multiple gigawatt hour worth of energy uh, during that year, right? So that's where you need to just understand these concepts a little bit. Uh, but there are other parameters like C rate, which is how fast you can charge or discharge the battery, 
the state of the charge. Uh, uh, there is again typically limitation based on each technology that can you use only 50% of the energy or can you use 100% energy. The round tip efficiency, all of these are uh, very important parameters and uh, these are just typical units which are uh, used for uh, each of these uh, uh, specific uh, terms. Uh, I'll be sharing this copy of this presentation with you, so don't worry about taking notes. Uh, you will have this presentation available for uh, you. Um, so ultimately what happens is there are almost around 10 key parameters such as uh, energy density, power density, safety, uh, temperature uh, range, uh, uh, cost, cycle life, maturity of the technology, efficiency, which needs to be evaluated before you choose technology for application. And some of these parameters also can change based on other parameters. So for example, classic example, it's cycle life. Uh, typically the cycle life, which is quoted by in most of the literature is at uh, 80% depth of discharge at 25 degree operating temperature. Uh, but if you are using or if you are oversizing the battery, then you can even get higher cycle life than that. Or if you are going for deeper discharge, then you, your cycle life will be reduced. So uh, it is very important that you understand these type of a trade-off before selecting technologies. And each technology has certain strengths and weaknesses. Again, I won't get going to too many details because of lack of time, but uh, uh, you have uh, uh, different applications where uh, different technologies can be found suitable. For example, lead acid batteries, I think still will uh, rule the world for next 10 years, particularly for backup applications where you are not really looking at cycling these batteries too much, but for anything where you're looking at daily cycling or more applications, I think lithium ion batteries are going to dominate. And if you're looking for six hours or longer duration, then the two options clearly are uh, vanadium redox batteries and sodium sulfur, ba uh, sodium, uh, uh, sulfur battery. Uh, but there are other emerging technologies like metal air batteries, uh, uh, lithium sulfur batteries. Those are also emerging now. Uh, also, these parameters are not static, uh, so these things keep on evolving. So here you are looking at how over the last uh, 20 years, uh, uh, different technologies have evolved in terms of their energy efficiency as well as cycle life. Uh, here is a chart which shows how the price has reduced, especially for the lithium ion batteries on the left hand side chart with the scaling up of the manufacturing. Uh, and on the right hand side chart, you are looking at both the volumetric and galvometric, that is by weight, energy density, how technologies are improving. Now, in terms of the market, uh, energy storage technologies can be part of the entire grade, right from the generation mix to transmission distribution to customer side. Uh, there are a lot of policies which have uh, improved in uh, last uh, 10 years. Uh, I've been fortunate and been part of many of those uh, committees to frame those policies starting with 2013. And now with sort of a merging of the National Energy Storage Mission and uh, National Transformative Mobility Mission, uh, there are a lot more opportunities coming up. Now CRC has formed committees where IESA is part of the advisory panel, uh, which is uh, framing some of the final rules and regulations in this area. Uh, the storage technology is one of the beauty is that you don't have to build storage technology only for one application. The storage technology is flexible enough where it can provide energy arbitrage, it can provide capacity, it can provide ancillary services, it can support in the renewable integration, it can enable microgrids both for rural as well as for smart microgrids for smart cities. Uh, particularly with the kind of renewable expansion we are looking where we are looking at adding another 100 gigawatt of uh, wind and solar in next couple of years to meet the 175 gigawatt target by 2022. And we are expected to continue to get to 450 gigawatt. It's very clear that we cannot just keep on absorbing that renewable energy as a real time energy on the grid uh, because that would have significant challenges. Already we are seeing in the real time market, uh, especially on the weekends, the prices have started going down below one rupee. And if we add all these other renewables, that can start happening almost every day uh, during the day uh, when solar energy is going to be abundantly available. Uh, when it comes to commercial industrial customers, uh, these are all load profiles of a single day for different type of customer. Like typically just looking at some of these load profile, you may think those are like a one week load profiles, but actually many processes have a lot of variability. And if you are trying to match like a rooftop solar with uh, the load, then you may actually uh, significantly end up undersizing the solar. 
Uh, on the other hand side, if you oversize the solar and if your load is not uh, uh, matching with that, if you have net meeting, then you are fine. But for most of the commercial industrial customers, most of the states are no longer allowing net metering. So then you will be wasting that energy or curtailing that energy. And in such case, your average uh, energy tariff will go higher for solar. Now, instead of that, if you use that solar energy in a battery, uh, you can use it to actually uh, uh, get more utilization from solar as well as you can uh, uh, balance the load. Uh, in terms of the uh, overall cost, and this is obviously the biggest uh, concern in India where everyone loves to wait for cheaper cost, uh, but as solar has shown where solar has come down from 17 rupees for the initial projects in Gujarat, now down to almost two, two and a half rupees. Uh, we are seeing a similar trend happening for storage as well. And especially when you blend solar plus storage, uh, where typically a solar unit will generate four or five kilowatt hour for one kilowatt. So if you're storing only half of that for maybe one hour, then you can actually get right now the levelized tariff of almost four rupees. Or even if you are storing that half a kilowatt for say four hours uh, during the day and using it for meeting your evening peak, then still your price would be less than six rupees, which is substantially lower than the tariff what commercial industrial customers already pay uh, to the utility. Uh, so there could be great opportunities for integrating storage as part of the grid interactive microgrids in the cities, as well as for uh, enabling better economic development in uh, rural areas, where otherwise because of power quality and unreliability, it is very difficult to uh, start energy intensive businesses in these areas. Uh, if you want to know more, uh, we have a India energy storage database where you can go and find out about various uh, uh, manufacturing plants, recycling plants. Companies are expected to get selected for the beta deployments. Uh, now, in terms of as an individual also, there are a lot of opportunities. You can go for higher studies, you can go for research, you can go for directly uh, the job, or you can get into the entrepreneurial uh, side. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities. You can look at materials uh, research. You can look at mechanical uh, components. You can look at economic uh, analysis and modeling. Uh, there is obviously management is a huge role, right from the supply chain management to uh, actual manufacturing uh, management or uh, uh, business side of it in terms of developing innovative business models. Uh, public policy is a key role. Uh, I was fortunate where I was able to combine all these three areas uh, through my PhD at Carnegie Mellon in engineering, uh, public policy, and management. But there are also other things happening where electronics engineers, electrical engineers, uh, mining engineers, uh, software developers, all of those have opportunities. So it is no longer that only electrical engineers or only chemical engineers can work in the energy storage field. The way the energy storage industry is evolving, this is a great uh, opportunity for doing interdisciplinary work across all the regions. Uh, there are already many scholarships available. And again, as the IESA, we are trying to compile this list. Uh, you will get access to this on the IESA website under the uh, member resource uh, section. Uh, there are also international scholarships available for students who want to go and uh, study in uh, either US, UK, or uh, Europe, uh, or even Australia. Uh, uh, we are also starting to create a list of uh, some of the prominent uh, universities. And again, we will uh, add PDPU on this list uh, uh, where the, uh, some of the significant research is taking place uh, uh, in India. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have set aside a 10 lakh uh, funding for uh, ISA awards and recognition, uh, which again, uh, as part of the ISA membership for PDPU, you all will be eligible to apply for. Uh, there are many other initiatives which we have. Uh, also, if uh, there are students who want to get more involved individually, uh, uh, so we have even created a Women in Energy initiative for encouraging more participation to bring gender parity to the sector, where we are offering 50% discount to uh, uh, student, uh, 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 women student, as well as uh, uh, early career professionals, where uh, you can get 50% discount on the professional membership of IESA. Uh, even for uh, fresh graduate students, uh, uh, that is uh, applicable. So if you are within five years of graduation, then you can have individual membership uh, and uh, get 50% off on that. Uh, uh, we have EV Adopter Circle initiative where we are looking at driving corporate adoption. Again, if uh, especially as a student members, if you want to uh, volunteer for any of these initiatives, this could be like a great opportunity to interface with industry and get connected. So uh, please take uh, make maximum use of the 
uh, initiative what uh, PDPU has taken by joining IESA. Um, um, and I'll be happy to share more details or you can ask more questions to my colleague, Debbie Dash, who is on the call about these uh, initiatives. Um, here is a student uh, registration form, which you can look at it on the IESA website. Here are some of the benefits and discounts which are available to the students uh, separately. Um, this is about, again, uh, uh, although we have launched the initiative, we also want to acknowledge that there are actually many women leaders uh, who are contributing to the field, both in India and internationally. So IESA has, uh, over the last uh, two years, uh, tried to make an attempt to recognize some of these women leaders. But uh, obviously, there are many more uh, who probably we are not yet interacting. So if you find out some other women leaders who are uh, inspirational and uh, you think we should include it in our database, then please uh, reach out to us and let us know. Um, we are also, as I mentioned, IESA Academy. We have a lot of resources available for online training, the mini community, Ask the Expert job portal is coming up in the next couple of months. Uh, we will launch it by 22nd September, which is the World Energy Storage Day. Uh, we also have IESA Industry Excellence Awards. So again, if you are looking for joining any company and you are looking at which are the uh, most innovative or leading companies. One easy way to look at is look, look for last three years IESA awards and uh, uh, find the winners. Uh, um, there are also various conferences which we host, including uh, uh, India Energy Storage Week, which will be held uh, again in January next year, uh, or ESS Meet, which is in fact taking uh, place next month, uh, uh, IESA e-mobility conclave, the stationary energy storage conclave, and our flagship event is now World Energy Storage Day Global Conference, where uh, uh, last year we had more than 8,000 participants from 70 plus countries. Uh, and we had more than 75 prominent speakers, including Professor Stanley Whittingham, the Nobel laureate, uh, uh, who won the Nobel Prize for his research on lithium ion batteries uh, uh, in 2019. Uh, we are also fortunate that Prime Minister himself took note of this uh, effort and uh, sent us a special letter. In fact, this year we are hoping to make India the host country and have Prime Minister deliver the keynote speech, especially considering the manufacturing mission, what is uh, launched now. Uh, but if you need additional information, we have etn.news as a website where you can get real-time information. Uh, we have a magazine which is released every other month. Uh, we have emerging technology radio where we regularly feature various entrepreneurs, policymakers, and other key stakeholders. So if you want to hear directly about their views, uh, we have more than 100 episodes uh, available in archive at either SignClouds, uh, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, or other podcast services. Also, we have released more than 10 uh, knowledge papers over the last uh, four or five years. Uh, again, as a member of IESA, uh, you will have access to those under the uh, membership resources section. And then there are certain paid reports which are not included in the academic membership. But if uh, you are starting some company or if you need access to that, uh, you can reach out uh, separately for purchasing those. And just as a background, as I mentioned, uh, IESA was started and is operated by Customized Energy Solutions. Uh, uh, CES is a global company headquartered in Philadelphia. Uh, I was fifth employee in CES in US operation. And now we have grown to almost close to 300 employees across five countries. Uh, uh, and we are recognized for our thought leadership. And one of the key differentiator for us is we are not just a consulting company, but we actually manage more than 13 gigawatt of assets across the electricity grid. So that's it. I hope uh, this was useful. Um, maybe uh, we can start taking some questions. I believe my colleague Debbie is also there. So if you can also enable him to participate, I'll quickly check if I need to step out for another meeting. If not, I will be uh, back in uh, two minutes. Achha, okay, I, I have some time. Um, so just give me one minute. Um, Okay, so perfect. So the meeting is running slightly late. Uh, um, uh, we can, um, yeah, I, I can be here for some more time. So Drishti or uh, Indrajit sir, handing it back to you. Uh, so in case anybody has got any question, kindly use a raise hand. Okay, so we have the first question from Kocho.
Yeah, Drishti, I think Indrajit sir is also uh, looking to speak, so maybe we can start with him. Uh, yes, sir. Hello. Uh, uh, hello. Yeah, can you listen to me, Rahul? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Rahul was an excellent, uh, you know, overview that you have given. Uh, uh, my question is, I just want to know the technology level readiness of BRB with respect to the membrane that we use in BRB. Uh, is it a still monopoly of uh, DuPont uh, on the Nephion class or any other thing is happening? Yeah, so that's an excellent question. So yes, I think uh, uh, Nephion is still the major uh, membrane which is being used, but uh, uh, I believe 3M also has introduced a competing membrane. Uh, it was used by a company called Vyanex in uh, US. Uh, unfortunately, Vyanex has had some problem in their commercialization, so uh, it has not yet reached very wide scale. Uh, but we can check out if uh, other companies have started using this uh, technology. Also, I believe uh, Viplotech, uh, which is one of the uh, promising technology startups in this area, which has already done uh, projects in uh, Japan, in uh, uh, Philippines, Korea, and uh, Nepal. Uh, they are also have done a lot of innovation in improving the stack design and uh, uh, try to improve efficiency through other parts. So yes, the uh, uh, Nafian membrane is a critical part of it, but there are also additional aspects related to the stack design, related to the uh, um, the, some of the additives into the uh, vanadium redox uh, 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 flow uh, uh, part of it. And uh, there is a lot of work happening on that. So if you're interested, uh, again, uh, 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 there should be many presentations from uh, Weflowtech or similar uh, uh, emerging companies in the, the IESA database. Thank you. And another question is uh, on lithium and uh, there is a Russian group who initiated work in 2016 on the uh, polymer type of anode material, ion exchange polymer type of, uh, uh, you know, negative electrode material, uh, where they are telling that low temperature uh, performance will be very, very good, not like the usual lithium and battery. What is the status of uh, uh, that work? Is that, has it come up uh, at the level of uh, that we can go to at least bench scale or still it is in the R&D? So I think these are still uh, uh, in the R&D or maybe early commercialization stage. So I would say based on what I have seen, maybe TRL 7, 8 uh, kind of a level, uh, okay. uh, but not yet uh, uh, out in the commercial level. Uh, although always there are one or two companies who may have received some uh, secretive funding. And again, in uh, mm -hmm. Russia, especially, there is a lot of active funding which is going into this sector. So I won't be surprised if there is someone who is uh, uh, very close to commercialization, but we don't know that. So one thing which I've learned in my last 15 years is that as soon as you say that, uh, no, this is not possible, someone comes in and proves you wrong. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, uh, this and this lithium sulfur technology is a high temperature technology. You know, uh, is it room temperature technology? Mm -hmm. So not lithium sulfur, the, uh, the sodium sulfur is a high temperature technology where it has a, a molten uh, sodium and uh, sulfur. Oh, that I know. Uh, what yeah. about lithium sulfur so, so lithium technology? Sulfur is, uh, lithium sulfur is uh, uh, sort of a next generation to the uh, uh, lithium ion uh, battery chemistry. It is actually being used for uh, uh, like drones and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, because... batteries for a higher energy density. They can have almost like a 500 yes. watt hour per kg. Yeah, Sagar, Sagar is actively working. Sagar Mitra is working on lithium sulfur, I know. Uh, means uh, from IIT Bombay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, many, many researchers are working on it. Uh, unfortunately, again, the technology commercialization there would be very challenging. One of the mm -hmm. leading companies in this space, uh, Oxys Energy, just announced bankruptcy uh, 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 earlier last month. Uh, in fact, their complete patent portfolio is right now up for sale. Uh, so uh, we'll have to wait and see. So that's where I think lot so of as, 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 as you are having a lot of experience, uh, what do you think uh, the inorganic uh, ion exchange membrane for, uh, for uh, redox flow battery system uh, will it be a good topic to work on? Because uh, people are uh, heavily investing and working also. Uh, but so, I know the status, I don't know, the recent status. Yeah. So uh, our approach is what we can do it is like whenever you have such uh, research projects where you want to get any industry feedback, now that you are part of IESA, we do have every second Tuesday of the month a technology working group meeting 
so if you can maybe join uh, in the next working group meeting and you can reach out to debi or uh, shivam kashyap who is the secretary for the uh, committee uh, uh, we can try to schedule a small presentation where you can present your research ideas and then that way the uh, other members who are actively working on this area can give you feedback uh, so that you have a better uh, industry uh, uh, orientation for the research thank you thank you uh, that's sure. all from my side is excellent exchange uh, i need this presentation also drasti sure. please make sure to send me uh, because based on that i will uh, make my future uh, you know uh, research uh, object basically sure great thank yeah. you thank you yeah uh, uh, can i uh, share something dr raul uh, on behalf of pd eu i'm um, excellent presentation very uh, very very crisp but you covered lot of topics and principally about the technologies now uh, i have because i am the director of the incubation center i am just sharing some of the views that people are talking about uh, we want to do a accelerator program in energy domain and that accelerator program typically talks on a leaps and bounds about the energy storage systems the major challenge for students that is coming in this space is about prototype testing because like energy storage it is difficult to have a small scale prototype testing maybe on a digital or it platform it would be a different hackathon which we do but when we want to work on some energy system storage uh, related thing and accelerator programs can you just elaborate a bit more that what support or what guidance you can provide in these initiatives sure uh, so uh, again if you can also uh, unmute my colleague db dash so i'll also let uh, him uh, join the interaction uh, and take over in case because i've just got a message that i may need to jump in next 5 minutes in that meeting so it would be good to have debi also uh, involved yeah uh, so hi everyone uh, hi yes sir so, uh, okay uh, just uh, debi can you answer this question uh, i'm just getting a call sure 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 hello hello so Uh, yes it's an interesting question actually now for the battery testing which is uh, required maybe for the lithium ion uh, it is mandated only for the electric vehicle applications and uh, only ara and icat is doing and that is not all testing few testing they are just taking uh, because the cell is manufactured outside india and the pack pack is uh, here so they are taking the uh, paper what is given by the cell manufacturers and validating that and if it is a pack label safety testing it is done by ari and icat it is only specific to ev but if you are going for the raw material side and the lab scale testing yes few labs are doing but they are just doing for themselves like it is maybe nft dc or uh, secri or it is ncl and others they are just doing for themselves but on that ground how we can help the industries most of the iits that don't have testing labs but they might have for something for themselves but we have a test lab where we are doing for the few companies like the companies uh, who are using batteries because uh, as elon musk once mentioned battery uh, there is a huge difference between the promotional material provided by a battery company and real technology parameters of a battery so many companies who are using battery as the uh, systems for the installations they don't know about what cell they are buying so we are helping them for the cell testing so we have a small lab in pune and if there is select group of companies or select group of persons who are developing some products we can do specific testing for them including temperature and cycle life and so we can help them and it is not like standardized testing we can uh, based on the requirement we can also modify the parameters okay okay thanks a lot debi thanks a lot rahul thank you adarshi i am done um sunil sir would you like to uh, i'll just on i enjoy i enjoyed the lecture and uh, i enjoyed the first part of it he was talking about the organization and i think the benefits that we at pdu could drive from that now since we have become a member of that but uh, thank you very much um anybody else got any question for devi sir can use the raise hand option and we can go ahead with the question yes sir yeah avinav bhai just for your information 
so material level testing all facilities uh, means uh, if you are innovating something and you want to test them uh, we have all the facility in our uh, center uh, nothing to, but pack level testing and all the, those huge things are not at all there uh, but uh, this year i am applying for a energy storage uh, you know center that is uh, founded by dst actually now mm, all is open and i am applying for that so that we can uh, actually generate the pack level testing facility uh, as well uh, for because <coughs> when you do uh, many number of groups in the university will work uh, it will be a line up job basically uh, that uh, every day maybe one or two pack you have to test uh, so uh, it's a it's a regular kind of uh, you know routine work so that's why uh, i'm trying to uh, get that means i'm applying now at the moment if i get funding then uh, hopefully in next year you will get the uh, same, means same, same facility operating yeah uh so we have first question uh, yeah hello can you hear me yeah yeah good morning ma'am my question is to rahul sir like i am a energy management graduate in post graduate i passed out from iswb bm and i am interested in taking management research in the electric vehicle segment now sir touched upon the management research a bit can you elaborate on it a bit more so that i can get some more insights about the topics that i can cover uh, okay so i can answer that so just before yeah. that just i will manage the mute and mute from my side so whenever it is relevant i will do please don't uh, change that that text time absolutely sir so, absolutely okay so uh, what we did uh, actually job prospective uh, evaluation for the energy storage space specifically just giving you background in a 1 gigawatt hour manufacturing capacity tesla uses around 300 employees so they mention it's a qualified employees like there is another 300 to 500 employees who are not qualified but they required for the plants but surprisingly there if you know in a 1 gigawatt hour ecosystem uh, the industry needs 10000 which is uh, uh, around 25 times of the requirement so this 25000 comes from the both an upstream and also downstream of the job employment what is downstream includes the raw metal processing chemical processing and also the equipment components bms others and on the downstream side also it includes like the project installations and also the financing legal aspects so in that ground, you have to finalize in which value stream you want to go and whatever the requirement you can, because there is uh, includes like financing of a project. There are different banks that are now coming across the globe, including the international organization like AIIB, ADB, and also just giving example now IFC or World Bank, they're also coming for multi-dollar projects on the financing side. So you have to find out the value chain here. You want to interested in the operation maintenance of the project or the installation of project or manufacturing of the project. So it includes the across value chain or it is required in the R&D or testing. So there is multiple job prospects uh, is there. Okay. Okay. Right, sir. Then um, uh, just to elaborate on it, if I decide to go for a say the charging part, if the charging comes from solar, like presently the charging comes from mainly from the coal-fired based plants. If I decide to go for decentralized solar system charging in EV, in that space, can there be any techno uh, economic analysis space? Uh, so uh, I just want to avoid that. Actually, it is not uh, clear with uh, okay. more than 50, uh, more than fifty percent of the uh, uh, of the ecosystem players in India. Mm. Is your charging station is directly charged from a uh, solar plant or indirectly charged from a solar plant? It just doesn't impact the grid because the it, where the grid is getting energy that is most important. Like if your solar plant is not at the same point where charging station installed, that doesn't matter because if there is a solar plant already installed or at an installation stage at Tamil Nadu or Rajasthan and you are using the charging station in Kerala, that means the grid is taking the re renewable energy. So yes. whenever government is telling about solar charging, that's good. If you have a rooftop and you are using a solar panel, that's fine. Or if you have a parking lot where you are using a solar panel, that's fine. But the most important thing is where the grid is taking energy. Is it grid is taking from the conventional coal, thermal, or maybe combined gas cycle plants? That is not great way. So we have to consider yes. where the grid is taking the... 
grid is taking the energy so yes there are different pilots across the europe they are going for the direct solar rooftop charging for the uh, solar charging infrastructure because they have lot of space but for indian concerned i don't think this is the only solution so mm. charging station will be at different location and solar plants will be at different locations there may be some pilot will come up for the direct solar to charging stations but that will be limited in long run okay 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 thanks so very much sir thank you devi uh, oh. can you hear me okay. yes can you hear me devi okay uh, no when you talk about greed so uh, you, uh, means what is your idea about the uh, grid uh, stability uh, as a source and sink will be used in the grid so in the old grid if i my, my uh, uh, injection is uh, you know the kind of level you are talking about like uh, charging uh, vehicles and all so it will be huge uh, integration or huge injection from the renewable sector uh, how the, what is the grid status now in india means uh, what government is doing uh, in that line uh, to get the uh, 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 grid stable under this new kind of uh, you know in injection of energies from renewables a large volume yeah what is okay. the status that's what okay. i want to know okay uh, again i had faced the same issue to onboard myself uh, but uh, uh, sir it's just sorry to interrupt uh, the mute uh, option is closed so uh, if you go mute i'll have to request you again and then you'll have to unmute oh, oh, so that okay. is the issue so okay okay no problem no problem so so it's a interesting question actually uh, on the grid side uh, we have not at that stage uh, where uh, the renewable energy renewable energy will impact the grid grid in a larger way because uh, just giving you the issue of the india india is now only focusing on energy access like there are many spaces in india who have no power access but on the second level of like association which we consider the power quality resiliency or maybe power backup indian government and both uh, our consumers are not focused a lot yes there are few consumers who are focused on the power quality side maybe a batch manufacturing process or pharmaceutical manufacturing process they are bothered about resiliency and power quality but if you consider that is the requirement for everyone like resiliency is the requirement mm -hmm. and uh, power quality is the requirement for everyone yes um there are different uh, agencies and there are different reports like till 2030 we don't record storage there are different agencies mention that but that is not the correct thing we we need energy storage for multiple things for the grid like just giving you taking mainland india and islands india in island india now it is fully operated by diesel gen set of cost of 40 rupees yeah, to yeah. 50 rupees yeah whole whole andaman nikobar i have seen yes yes yeah, so it is yeah. 40 rupees to 50 rupees under the greening the islands there are few projects has been done but that is not properly integrated through ems so the purpose is not fully fully approved like now also at the 11 o'clock the grid is taking the energy from the uh, diesel generated instead of solar so there is a huge scope in the um, island space and in the mainland space yes government is now coming up with few policies like ancillary services which we started doing this uh, advocacy in 2013 and finally after 8 years now government is released draft ancillary framework with energy storage like us is done very well and we are managing around 350 megawatt of energy storage assets for the isos like pjm and kaiso for the grid balancing similarly in india we have advocated that and uh, similarly few uh, think tanks told that no, no, no india don't certainly things will, uh, things will move forward things will move forward no no question okay. i just wanted to know that Ten years back, where we we were, and I think nothing much change happened in this uh, grid sector. Basically, still government uh, is, is thinking. Uh, it is happening. If you allow me for some time, I can explain you. Oh please. Okay. So the one is the ancillary services framework is done, and in 2017, few think tanks talked to government like only allow the thermal plants, uh, which are not used at low PLF, only they are can able to manage the. grid so that was the reason it was not happened earlier now hopefully next 3 months the storage assets will be used for grid balancing this is one part mm -hmm. second part of the grid is about the substation management 
there are many pilots has been done by bscs rajdhani bscs amuna tata power ddl now we are expecting adani electricity and rajasthan discoms are coming for that so in this space it is already happened third one is about smart grid integration yes there are few projects on the storage side at rajasthan and also puducherry smart grid projects has been done for the grid side so this is third part is already done and fourth part is about the renewable plus storage for the grid that case now under the national electricity plan which is now revised after 16 years government is planning for a 1000 megawatt hour of storage in that so on multiple aspects apart from the grid scale renewable hybrid project only for the grid few policies are coming up okay thank you yeah my audible am i audible okay devi ji yes. uh, this is abhijit uh, from solar department uh, my query is little non technical uh, about the membership so is there any professional membership available for faculty it's available so uh, what's the procedure it's online or uh, we should it's online it's online you just check, go to india esa.info uh, slash membership okay thank you Okay. So now uh, hi, we have a, I actually yes. Uh, uh, yes please introduce yourself that will be helpful right right so i am uh, satyashree i am actually working uh, with my son now so uh, yeah so my question was like uh, you have talked about a lot of uh, battery battery factories and all that so uh, is any company working on the second life of battery and uh, Uh, are we worried about sourcing lithium uh, in the future if uh, so many companies come and start manufacturing batteries and they have not uh, are not mature enough to like my base phase and all okay so it's a good question and actually now people are asking it but companies are working on this for last uh, uh, 10 years so there are three part of it one part is if you are using a systems in your high power applications or in the electric vehicle after the first use you can use in the second application which was created by few companies like if you have a 2000 cycles and you have already used 1500 another 500 cycles left then you can use in the behind the btm btm market in the behind meter the applications like if you use one cycle for your backup power in your soho system like small office or household office then around 50 companies launched this product across the globe from us and europe and other market giving an example of it is um, mercedes benz energy all the ev companies launched this product because their plan was that they will use these batteries after their first use of ev in the second life but it was not successful the reason one of the reason is that when you were using a second life and you bought a battery at 8000 or 800 usd and when your second life is coming after 5 years the original battery prices actually fall down so once the maturity of the prices will come up second life will come up and second on the next part is refurbishment of the batteries like you are not in using second time but if you have your battery has a 32 cells out of that five cells is not working properly you just remove that five cell and you add the new five cell but that need proper standards which is not there in india many small assemblers in gurgaon hyderabad and other locations are doing this which is dangerous and that is the reason every month we are getting fireside issues in the newspaper because they are removing the cells which is not working putting the additional cells and refurbish the battery and used it is low cost and it is dumped by our neighbor by countries in india that is more most dangerous yeah, thing to do cell that matching is not done cell matching is uh, badly done basically no cell matching and then just pack it and then yes. uh, thermal uh, disbalance and then fire yes so there are multiple reasons cell balancing is not done or they are using the bms which is not doing the active cell balancing because in the passive cell balancing the new cells are not managed properly if mm -hmm. all cells are new then passive cell balancing bms can work perfectly but if few cells are old and few cells are new then active cell balancing bms is essential this is the second part of the life and third part is recycling so recycling means you are going in detail of the cell and in india just across the globe recycling is new urban mining and people are using it but in india it is not set, taking up the reason is mostly india use the lfp batteries and in lithium lfp no one want to the refurbish the iron because that's the widely available and lithium the percentage is less but in nmc which is started use last 5 6 years 
that will have a pure case because then nmc manganese is widely available in india only the main issue may not be lithium cobalt because that is the rare rare material and that is only in congo so now there is no company who is doing doing the uh, recycling of cobalt because they are just uh, taking that and sending to the neighbor by country like specifically china and they are reusing it which is a good step but maybe for the lithium also once this reprocessing cost will come down then people will also take the lithium from these batteries and they will reuse so for recycling cost is the processing cost is higher so once that is mature then we may see cobalt and lithium both will be reused in new batteries so for that also there is a policy last year came up called bwmr and we are actively engaged with ministry of environment and creating that policy because the old policy which was called bhmr battery handling and material rule that was uh, in 2003 or 4 it was amended and it was created in 1980s uh, that was only for the responsibility of the producer but now in bwmr it covers all technology beyond lead acid batteries it includes lithium ion and others and it also creates the extended responsibility of the producers like the dealers traders and the users they have also the responsibility but it is on draft stage it will come very soon so minister of environment is working on this so there are multiple things in the value chain and uh, we uh, work in this space the reason is maybe this recycling will have a issue after 5 years but if you don't have a policy or a standards now it will be a hurdle for everyone yeah right right i think uh, you have explained it very well uh, uh, maybe uh, like uh, i had also some uh, like thoughts on this but uh, if you can uh, try to touch upon like uh, about the fuel cell technology like uh, many of people are thinking that uh, next uh, 10 15 years down the line people will move forward so should we directly uh, jump to fuel cell and uh, uh, like be ahead in that market or some something like that? okay so anyone want to reach to us just now write to us at contact at india esa.info we can discuss further but in fuel cell yes it is not the new thing actually for the last 10 years there is many companies who started in india and they have uh, they are not uh, <laughs> existing now which includes uh, intelligent energy essential energy many companies like there are few companies who are struggling and getting good funding including bloom energy and others but on the fuel cell the main cost is like uh, the electrolysis cost and also second one is on the transportation side so now actually with government's new focus on national green hydrogen mission we see and on fuel cell side it is uh, i cannot tell it is only for fuel cell it may be uh, it may be for anything it may be methanol it may be ethanol it may be hydrogen anything so on all aspects the application actually uh, includes the uh, large because all these new industries it is steel cement fertilizer they all use hydrogen and fuel cell so here it is not competing only with batteries it is it is another source of energy but the bottleneck still remains on the electrolysis cost and uh, there is no electrolyzer manufacturer in india and second one is the transportation cost it may be containerized transportation or it may be pipeline transportation but good part now big companies in india who have uh, already have a long business in the pharma petrochemicals they are interested in this so uh, it is it not only include only reliance there are many other companies who are in petrochemical they are also interested so that might see the price fall in next two to three years and that may drive the indian hydrogen and fuel cell market but it is complementary to each other like in the uh, for a power electronics application you cannot use the fuel cell like in a mobile you cannot use a fuel cell maybe for mobility right. applications you can use yeah maybe big buses and all that Okay. Yes, yes. But mobility application many times it can be used only if the cost will competitive with batteries. Okay. Uh, I think we have few other questions, but uh, you can just write, uh, sir, uh, on the mail ID, and they will get back to you with the answers, or you can write to us, and we will try and get back to you with the relevant answers. I would now like to invite Indrajit sir to you know. address with the closing remarks and thank you baby sir for being a part over here with us thank, thank you uh, just a second yeah am i audible yes sir so it was my actually long view when we started the center with uh, solar energy conversion and storage center you know that's name so department of solar energy and then solar research and development sector 
and then i think four or five years back i had uh, a, a talk in the same platform at uh, delhi with rahul and there i discussed about i did not know that you already uh, jarmi is member of uh, your uh, uh, this isa but it's a great opportunity for all the budding uh, people and uh, very innovating people who are now in pdp basically i know many of them from mechanical chemistry chemical that uh, many 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 meritorious uh, new uh, faculties have joined and uh, have lot of uh, you know um, kind of uh, you know they have um, uh, dream basically to do something uh, for the society that uh, uh, thing comes to the market so with this view actually uh, input from iesa will have a tremendous uh, uh, you know inspiration i that's that's what i believe Uh, if people know day to day what is happening in the field, and then they also uh, get a research direction, basically to uh, hold up. So, uh, our uh, means uh, many thanks to, uh, of course, Devi and uh, the other guy Sivam, uh, because they were the first uh, to interact with us, and then uh, uh, exchange with Rahul to keep this talk. Now we are already member, and we want to actually exchange hands. Uh, people need many. people from other field also wants to work in the storage because this is as he told rahul told that iot ia uh, is uh, uh, is uh, looking uh, fewer uh, than the uh, storage and storage related applications in your competition as well so it is really field because wherever you want to go you need energy and you need sustainable energy whether uh, it is coming from grid or from other source and where this uh, gap is being mitigated by the storage and that's why the storage and renewable energy are having a very good nexus and in the future days i think water will come in the cycle also because uh, water treatment water to hydrogen all these will be energy nexus and then storage nexus will be uh, woven in the same thread so i, I think uh, it's a great opportunity for this uh, decade or the coming decades as well as uh, for century as well so uh, my uh, heart means from my heart actually i express my thanks to uh, all these member of iesa they accepted our view and all this happened because of iic because they have taken such a class of hackathon now uh, which is very timely and uh, which is very very inspiring for the btech budding guys who will be next generation uh, industrial uh, as, uh, assets for the country so with this uh, i uh, thank uh, the iic i thank drishti i thank rahul uh, from my uh, deeper of my heart my uh, uh, his colleagues like sivam as uh, as well as devi devi has a, a great uh, knowledge hub now i think earlier i have uh, i have heard her, uh, him uh, but uh, you know during those days he was maturing but now he feel, i think he has matured a lot and uh, he is really uh, taking i think they will be taking the country ahead with this research thank you very much Thank you sir thank you everybody thank you for joining for today's session recording stopped